something big is brewing on the rails of the South Coast. For the first time, MBTA and Keolis are putting traditional diesel on trial to test a cleaner, renewable fuel that could dramatically reduce train emissions. It's part of a quiet but urgent push to give rail passengers a healthier ride. But what exactly is this new fuel? Why does this moment feel like a turning point for rail travel in the region? And most crucially, how will MBTA and Keolis decide if this bold pilot is worth scaling across the entire network? Let's find out in today's episode of Great Train Speed. In 2024, Massachusetts Senator Edward Markey and other representatives urged the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, to update national air pollution standards for locomotives to protect rail workers and nearby communities. They highlighted that current standards haven't been revised since 2008 and that many locomotives still emit uncontrolled pollution. Additionally, 40 members called on the Department of Transportation and the EPA to prioritize unionized labor in green train transition programs. The letter stresses the health risks posed by outdated diesel locomotives and calls for stronger regulations. Since 2008, the EPA has failed to modernize its rules, despite overwhelming scientific evidence showing that diesel exhaust harms air quality, accelerates climate change, and worsens public health. By 2016, nearly half of all locomotive emissions in the U.S. were going unregulated, and the burden has fallen hardest on communities, especially those living near rail lines, where the air is often thick with the exhaust of outdated engines. In Massachusetts, that urgency is echoed by environmental justice advocates like the Sierra Club and community-based organizations. Their message is simple, electrify the MBTA commuter rail system. While federal action moves slowly, the Commonwealth is stepping forward, adopting policies like the advanced clean truck rule and expanding electric vehicle incentives to cut emissions from trucks and buses. Most importantly, the MBTA has committed to fully electrifying its commuter rail system by 2035. Nowhere is the need more pressing than along Boston's Fairmount line, where trains pass behind communities that lead to some of the state's highest asthma and respiratory illness rates. For these residents, electrification is not just about cleaner trains. As of now, Keolis has announced a call for proposals from manufacturers to produce new battery electric multiple unit trains for the MBTA Fairmount line. As the operator and maintenance partner of MBTA's commuter rail system, Keolis anticipates these trains will begin operation in 2028. In the meantime, another solution is being considered. Recently, an official announcement came that locomotives servicing Newburyport, Massachusetts are now running on hydro-treated vegetable oil, HVO which is known as a renewable diesel fuel at the center of a groundbreaking pilot program launched in May 2025 by Keoli's Commuter Services, in partnership with the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority, MBTA. The initiative targets all locomotives laying over at the Newburyport Commuter Rail Facility, which has become the state's first operational hub for testing this cleaner alternative in real-world conditions. How does this development represent a breakthrough for the region's rail system? While not entirely emission-free like electric trains, hydro-treated vegetable oil, HVO, presents a powerful interim solution, delivering up to a 70% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions over its life cycle while significantly cutting harmful pollutants. One of HVO's key advantages is its compatibility with existing engines and fueling infrastructure, eliminating the need for costly upgrades and enabling immediate deployment with high environmental and public health impact. This practical, low-barrier shift fits into a broader regional effort. Massachusetts is working closely with other states through coalitions like the Multi-State Zero Emission Vehicle Task Force and the Transportation and Climate Initiative to reduce transportation-related emissions and accelerate the transition to clean energy solutions. These partnerships reflect a shared recognition. While long-term electrification is the goal, interim steps like HVO adoption can bridge the gap effectively. We're already seeing how this transition can take shape. In San Francisco, for example, Caltrain's electrification project, launched in 2024, has replaced aging diesel locomotives with electric multiple units, leading to dramatic reductions in onboard air pollution and marking a major milestone in urban rail modernization. Together, these efforts illustrate how both short-term fuels like HVO and long-term electrification can complement each other on the path to cleaner, healthier rail systems. Energy transitions, the shared goal is clear, 
reduce pollution and improve daily life. But the degree and nature of the impact differ in meaningful ways. In San Francisco, Caltrain has phased out diesel locomotives in favor of fully electric trains, achieving near zero local emissions. The result is dramatic. Noise levels have dropped, engine idling has disappeared, and researchers have measured a nearly 90% reduction in black carbon levels inside the trains, making onboard air significantly healthier for passengers. For communities living along the corridor, this shift means cleaner neighborhoods, reduced respiratory risks, and quieter surroundings. While the Downeaster expansion project offers numerous advantages, it still encounters significant obstacles. So, what are the hurdles preventing its progress despite broad support? Before we jump into the next section, make sure to subscribe and keep up with our latest updates. Even though this project was quite promising, it also faced several challenges. Chief among these is cost. HVO is notably more expensive than conventional fossil diesel, primarily due to its more intensive production process, which involves hydrogen treatment, advanced refining. Although the MBTA has not released cost data for the Newburyport pilot, it is likely that long-term affordability will be a decisive factor in whether the use of HVO can extend beyond a localized test phase. Equally critical is the challenge of supply chain infrastructure. HVO depends on a steady, scalable flow of waste-based feedstocks such as used cooking oils, animal fats, and industrial food waste. While this reliance on waste products is part of what makes HVO environmentally attractive, it also introduces complexity into the fuel's manufacturing. Feedstocks must be collected, refined, and transported across long distances, which can strain logistics networks and inflate the carbon footprint if not carefully managed. From a manufacturing perspective, the challenges of scaling HVO production go far beyond simply increasing output. Meeting the precise chemical standards necessary for compatibility with modern diesel engines demands advanced hydrogenation technology and specialized refining facilities. Since the promising future of the project was revealed, how have local residents reacted to its progress and what impact do they expect it to have? And do you think these challenges can hold the program back? Drop a one if you agree, or zero if you're not sure yet. The announcement of the MBTA's plan to use hydro-treated vegetable oil, HVO, as a renewable fuel sparked a variety of reactions from viewers. Some expressed confusion and skepticism, questioning whether traditional diesel engines could effectively run on this alternative fuel. Critics caution that reliance on HVO might slow investment in fully electric or hydrogen-powered trains, which promise zero emissions and long-term sustainability. On the other hand, many responded with excitement and support, appreciating the idea as long as it does not compromise the commuter rail's on-time performance, which remains a critical priority for passengers. Technically knowledgeable viewers shared that converting engines to run on HIVO is relatively straightforward requiring only minor modifications like a heat converter to warm the fuel, making the project seem feasible and practical. However, despite the positive feedback, a significant portion of the community voiced a clear preference for full electrification of the rail system, considering it the ultimate solution for zero emissions and long-term sustainability. Keolis has secured a new contract from the Stockholm Regional Transport Authority to manage and operate an extensive network of urban and suburban bus routes across the municipalities located north and west of Stockholm. This 10-year agreement, valued at over 600 million euros, commenced in August 2024. This project marks Keolis's second initiative utilizing HVO diesel technology following their ongoing pilot program with the MBTA. This contract not only reinforces Keolis's commitment to sustainable and innovative public transportation solutions, but also highlights their growing expertise in deploying cleaner fuel technologies like HVO diesel. It's an exciting step forward in shaping greener urban mobility and reducing environmental impact in major cities. As MBTA General Manager Philip Eng affirmed, this pilot is a vital step forward in the agency's ongoing commitment to slash its carbon footprint and build a more resilient transit system. Keolis CEO emphasized the urgency of embracing innovative solutions like HVO to meet Massachusetts's ambitious climate goals and accelerate the shift away from car dependency. 
Thanks for riding with us today, everyone. Subscribe, and we will see you on the next great train speed stop.